it's extremely important to understand the examples that I'm offering you are examples from what I actually do. And I happen to use, a, you know, Fink's taxonomy of significant learning and its three column table, well, a, a modified variation of it. And if I was doing competency based instruction, I would be using a DACUM that we, um, that we show people how to use in PID 3210. These are foundational tools. Uh, in 3210, we also use a, a, a tool called the outcome, outcome Map for Outcomes Based Instruction. And I have resources, or I have some examples of that in the resources section of the course. Um, I'm showing you, at minimum, what you can do with an Outcomes Based course using the methods that I've used. But there are other methods. There are other methods. So what you're looking at here is referred to as Fink's Taxonomy. And within Fink's taxonomy, um, it follows this circular approach. You've got foundational knowledge, which is about understanding information ideas. There's an application where you're looking at skills, abilities, creating something, managing projects. And as soon as you start doing that, you're starting to integrate things, you move into integration, right? So you're connecting with people and ideas. As soon as you start connecting with people and ideas, you then move into the human dimension. And this is about responsibility, leadership, my role as an individual, my role to the community. Um, and when you start moving into the human dimension, then you're dealing with ethics, values, you know, what D refers to as caring. And then he also incorporates learning how to learn. And this is about that inquire to keep on going the self-directed aspect of learning and continue to learn how to learn. So D. Fink's taxonomy provides a structure of going from foundational knowledge to learning how to learn. And if you were to take a look at the course design that you've just uh, been experienced or ju have just seen, you'll see I follow a very similar fashion. But again, this is not the only methodology. Now his taxonomy does lead to this three column table. That's the result of it, and this three column table leads to a course. But there are other designs. For example, as I mentioned, there's several other design models. Um, this is a document in the resources section. I believe it's titled uh, Seven Models or the Top Seven Instructional Design Models. I would argue that these are the top seven. Uh, they include Bloom's taxonomy, which is not an instructional des design model. It's just a, it's just a way of selecting verbs. But um, in the design community, some of these are the more common models. So the Addy model is probably one of the most popular models that you will see. It's used in a lot of different places. Uh, it's based on analysis, design, development, implementation. I'll let you take a look at this in greater detail. So this is one model that you can use. The reason that we're offering you the option of using whatever design model you want to use, if you have a center for teaching and learning at your organization, or you are familiar with somebody else, or you are familiar with the design model, you can use another model you can use another model. Um, the key thing is, all of, most of these models or most design do talk about taking a look at who your learner is, right? Identifying your audience, recognizing what type of instruction you want, what the objectives are. Well, I would argue what the learning outcomes are or the goals and objectives if you're doing the day come. And then taking a look at that design process, you know, whether or not you're gonna storyboard, creating prototypes. So in this whole model, the instructional design models are tools that can help you to realize some of your design plans. They're really not design models. They don't really help you thinking think about the difference between competency-based and outcomes-based instruction. That is something you have to do prior to using one of these models. These models are more, I would almost argue that they are implementation models. Um, and so the, app, the ADDI model is really about going from once you've got a starting point, then building it out. The ADDI model is very popular. Uh, another model is Merrill's Principles of Instruction based on tasks, activities, and knowledge transfer. So you can take a look at these in greater detail. Gagne's nine events of instruction, very, very behavioristic model. This is really what uh, the DACA model is based on. Um, there's or, or there's aspects of the DACA model that this would play into. So if you're doing competency-based instruction, this can help you to build out some of your ideas uh, in a more significant way. Bloom's taxonomy is really about the verbs you use to build out your objectives and your goals and objectives in the DACA model and your outcomes. So this is this helps you identify the levels of uh, understanding or, or the levels of um, um, 
uh, verb languages, you know, going from remembering, understanding, application, analysis, evaluation, creation. You know, at, at the higher order thinking skills would be uh, would equate with uh, outcomes-based instruction. The lower order thinking skills would be <clears throat> uh, relegated to competency-based models. So this is uh, a, a taxonomy, not necessarily a model. Um, Dick and Carey model is another model that has been used in, in structural design methodologies. It has a bit of an iterative process. So you can take a closer look at this. The Kemp model is another one. Um, action mapping is used in um, in uh, some circles. And uh, there's more. There's another model that isn't necessarily on this page. It's called the SAM model. It's based on rapid design. Um, I have some other resources that will point to that one as well. There are many different design models that you can use to help you to implement um, your actual instructional design. But we still want you to focus on whether or not you're doing the competency-based perspective or the outcomes-based education, and then getting clear on that. And then once you uh, have that clear, you can move in whatever direction is going to work best for you in terms of selecting your instructional design. We encourage you to use the models that we use at um, VCC. The DACOM is a wonderful instructional design model um, that is very, very effective for competency-based instruction. And the uh, outcome map um, that we also teach at uh, in 3210 is is wonderful for outcomes-based instruction. And I happen to use the um, Fink's taxonomy and Fink's three-column table, which is a variation of the outcome map. So the Fink's taxonomy is a three-column table. The outcome map that we teach in, in the 3210 is actually a five-column table. So, you know, it's and it's a slight variation. Um, the important thing is you find a tool, you find a model, you find a design that's going to work with you. If you have an organization like a Center for Teaching and Learning at your institution, find out what they are using and see if you can get some support. You know, you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of models out there. We're pointing to a lot of ideas and the resources. But the important thing is build your design based on whether it's going to be competency-based or outcome-based. And with that start, you can use a variety of the design models that are out there. Or you can use the examples that we're showing you.